last lecture, uh, we learned some interaction curve of inelastic column. So we have driven uh, some interaction curves, right? Yeah. For this kind of uh, uh, pink column. So we get the maximum first of the moment corresponding to normalized coverage. Then we get this point. So different E and different LR, we can get this uh, point. So uh, ultimately, we can draw the curve like this. When L over R equals 60, like that. So the vertical axis is uh, normalized uh, axial force, right? Horizontal axis is, uh, this one is the first of the moment, is uh, yielding moment. So normalized uh, first of the moment, horizontal axis. If you draw, then you have learned uh, last week, right? Uh, from this curve, uh, we can consider interaction equations. In this equation, P is actual force, PU is uh, actual strength, MU equal moment capacity, M maximum equal maximum second order moment. It is second order moment. The previous one we draw regarding our first order moment, right? So the interaction curve curve is uh, looks like this it is not straight but uh, this interaction equation consider second of the moment we can make this interaction equation regarding the strength of actual force and then the moment so we call it interaction equation as you see the relationship is linear so linear interaction equation so from that the linear interaction equation concept this AISC LRFT interaction equation has been developed. This equation can be drawn here. That is a linear interaction from here to here, straight. P over PU plus M over MU equal 1.0. That is straight linear interaction equation. So AISC LRFT interaction equation have been developed basis of linear interaction equation but the actual nonlinear curve like this that is the curve obtained from the uh, exact analysis considering inelasticity so we call it plastic zone analysis so actual one is this curve if we assume the linear interaction equation then this straight line considering these two uh, LRFT curve developed how to assume this kind of bilinear curve from straight line up to here yeah, you have one linear curve and from here to here another linear curve based on the boundary P over PU equal 0.2 so you have two linear curve in LRFT curve design called this bilinear curve when it design, we use this bilinear curve. So that curve can be represented by these uh, two equations. Okay, two equations. P over pi C P U. Here we consider the uh, resistance factor also. is greater than 0 0.2. This curve equation can be written like this. If uh, this value is less than 0 0.2, this one. Okay. This equation can be written like this. That is LRFT interaction equations for designing pin color. So when we design, we use these two equations corresponding to the magnitude of this value. Here, you know these terms. And then here, M nu X means moment capacity against X axis. M nu I, moment capacity against Y axis. M A X equal second order moment against x axis this one m a y second order moment regarding y axis do you understand yeah it's the factor so uh, we have to uh, address this uh, second order moment how to calculate this second order moment the lrft design equation provide this equation this is a second order moment equal p1 m and T plus P2 MLT. They provide this equation. Uh, this LRFT equation assumes linear elastic analysis. 
So when designers use a linear elastic analysis, they have to calculate second order moment like that. This nonlinear moment can be obtained using this equation. Okay. So this committee member developed this equation, uh, how to get the uh, nonlinear second order moment from linear elastic analysis. M and T equal moment without sway. I show you the figure in the next page. MLT equal moment with sway. P1 equal amplification factor for P small delta effect. P2 equal amplification factor for P large delta effect. I'll explain in the next page with this figure. So as I mentioned, the LRFT use linear elastic analysis. Uh, how to get the MMT and MLT for calculation of MA, second order moment? How to get? Firstly, uh, let's consider this uh, two-story frame. This frame has the vertical load W1, W2, and lateral load H1 and H2, right? From this one, we apply some boundary here, lateral boundary, okay? And analysis this structure. So that means we apply the lateral boundary here, lateral boundary here. That is this one. And then analyze, analyze. Then we have the moment here, moment like that, without sway due to this lateral boundary, okay? Lateral support. We have the, some, the moment diagram like that. Then moment is called M and T. And T means non-translational. That means without lateral sway, non-translational moment. After this analysis, we get the reaction H1 prime, H2 prime, right? At the point of our the adding the boundary. Lateral reaction force we apply here without any original the force, like that. Then we get the moment like this shape. It is called MLT, M lateral translation. That means the moment with sway. So if you do linear or uh, elastic analysis, this one equal to this one plus that one, right? Due to superposition. So left hand side, uh, the analysis result must be identical to uh, this, the moment MNT plus MLT, right? Due to superposition. So far, uh, we did elastic analysis. So superposition works in elastic analysis. Then why they divide into two different the analysis? That is, MNT is the moment uh, without uh, lateral sway. And then MLT with the sway, uh, the characteristic of these two moments are different. Uh, ultimately, we have to get the second order moment. Do you remember how to get the second order moment? First order moment times what? Amplification factor multiplied by amplification factor. Then we can get the second order moment. In this equation, P1 stand for amplification factor. P2 also amplification factor. But this M1 regarding the moment without lateral sway. P2 is amplification factor regarding the case with sway. So P1 and P2, the character, their characters are different. So this LRFT recommend these two different analysis and they get the moment with a different uh, the character and then they also calculate the different amplification factor. P1 is for without sway, P2 with retro sway case. That's the reason they divide it into two uh, different analysis. As you remember, P1 is the braced case without retro sway. In that case, the P1 we already calculate here, right? And the moment case. Sometimes we have the lateral load, then we already calculate P1, amplification factor, right? Without sway case. So that is CM over 1 minus P over PK, right? Then must be greater than 1.0 because it is amplification factor. We already uh, driven this amplification factor. How about the P2? P2 is amplification factor for this sway case. We have not driven 
this amplification factor so far. So uh, I will uh, present the derivation of B2 now. By the way, the uh, B2 equation can be written this one over this one. We can use uh, one of both. So 1 over 1 minus sigma P delta 0 sigma HL 1 minus 1 minus sigma P sigma PK. I'll explain in the next page more detail. As you see here, this is bin column. That is the laterally less trend, right? There is no lateral sway. That is lateral sway. Okay. So this is less trend. Uh, regarding the lateral sway. This case is, uh, yeah, simulate this case. There is lateral support. There is no lateral sway. Huh? There is no lateral sway. Why? Right? Here, in the case, this uh, displacement is called small delta. So due to this small delta effect, we have the additional moment, P small delta effect. This effect is considered by B1 factor here, amplification factor. Like this form. Then what is B2? B2 case, it has the lateral sway like that. Applied P. Then we have the additional moment P large delta. This effect is called B2 factor. So that is B2. B2 uh, multiply for MLT. Sway case. Okay. Sway moment. Sway amplification factor. So let's look at the, how to get uh, this equation, P2 derivation. Okay? Yeah, let's consider this portal frame subjected to axial force and the lateral load called sigma h. If you consider this lateral load, if you do first order analysis, you have lateral deformation. It is called delta zero. So we ignore P delta effect in first order analysis, we ignore P delta effect. So uh, your lateral uh, force is sigma delta and your displacement is, uh, let's say, delta zero. Sigma H over delta zero, it means lateral stiffness. Lateral load divided by lateral displacement. It is lateral stiffness. That is a uh, first order case. Let's look at the second order case. Uh, we have to consider P large delta effect. If you consider the second order displacement, lateral displacement is delta. So you have uh, the additional moment here, P large delta moment due to this P delta, right? You have P here and the, you have additional P here. You have P large delta effect. P delta, you have moment here and here. So, uh, if you divide by this H, L is the same as H, divide by L or H, the same. If you apply this lateral load, let's say sigma P delta over H, then due to this lateral load, you have the moment here, right? This lateral load times this H, right? The moment is P delta. Uh, P delta effect can be uh, represented by this uh, horizontal load. It is the same. So sigma P delta over H and sigma H you have here. So the horizontal load is sigma H, sigma P delta over L. This L means H, like that. That is uh, second order lateral load, right? And then second order displacement. That means lateral load divided by lateral displacement. That means lateral stiffness in second order analysis. So now we are assuming no change of stiffness on the P change. As you see, P increase, uh, P added here. Right hand side, P, P effect is added. But stiffness, as P added, delta increase also. So we are assuming the stiffness between the first order analysis and second order analysis is identical. Stiffness is identical. No change in stiffness on the uh, P consideration. Do you understand? Through this assumption, we can calculate this delta. Then we can finally obtain this delta equal 1, 1 minus sigma P delta 0 sigma HL.
like that. This delta is a second order displacement, lateral displacement, right? This one is a first order lateral displacement. That is P2, so amplification factor. In case of this kind of a sway case, so we call it P2. So this is the displacement relationship, okay? Delta equal P2 delta zero. So sway moment, that is moment. Sway moment is directly proportional to the lateral deflection. This sway moment is directly proportional to the lateral displacement. As long as uh, delta equal P2 delta zero, that means we can write sway second order moment equal P2 times uh, first order moment. See, this is directly proportional. Another equation is that yeah, this one. In that case, the second order displacement uh, at mid height equal approximately first of the moment times this one that is amplification factor for this kind of pink color a pink column subjected to uh, axial load p and lateral load q in the case uh, we already derived that one before but then uh, from this one we consider this kind of multi-story multi-way frame in the case from here to here similarly uh, y maximum displacement equal y zero first of the displacement one minus minus here we have just one color so p over p e but here we have several p here several loading i mean so sigma p and then we have several column here sigma p e k here top and bottom are hinged so p e but here it is not hinge, then we have to use PEK, uh, all the bucking load, considering boundary condition. We have several, so sigma, several loading, sigma. So from here we simulate this equation. So that is the second order displacement equal to first order displacement times amplification factor. Again, the sway moment is directly proportional to the lateral displacement. This is sway moment. Sway moment is directly proportional to sway displacement. Second order maximum moment equal first order maximum moment times amplification factor. Yeah. That is the elevation of uh, B1 and B2, especially uh, we already learned B1. So today uh, drive B2. Okay, see you everybody in next lecture.